Well, hey there, everyone, and welcome to episode number 10 of the Just Asia podcast. My name is Kevin O'Shea. I am a Canadian living in uh, Shenzhen, China, my 21st year in Asia, uh, and I am coming to you with another episode of the podcast that profiles people who are doing interesting things in this big space called Asia. Last week, we had a fantastic episode where I got to talk to Ricky, Ricky Okanda, uh, better known as Paprika Girl, and we got a lot of fantastic feedback about that episode. A lot of people really enjoyed it, and I want to say thank you to everyone who listened, to everyone who downloaded, and all the people who've been talking about the Just Asia podcast. Uh, I want to thank everyone who's been listening. There's been a lot more of you, and I'm really pleased with how quick this podcast is growing. It's fantastic. It excites me and uh, lights a fire under me to make more episodes. And this week, another fantastic interview, another fantastic story, a very interesting person. Uh, This week in episode number 10, I'm talking to Austin Guidry. Austin is an American who has been living in China for quite some time. And uh, he's been here for more than 10 years and doing a lot of very interesting things. He is an educator, a content creator, a YouTuber, and uh, someone who, again, has lived in in different places than I have, who's had a very different experience of China than I have. And that's one of the things, what I, one of the reasons why I love talking to people and interviewing them for a podcast like this is that the scope of my experience is very limited. I've only lived in two cities in China. I've worked at two schools. I'm an educator. I don't do other things. And uh, yeah, so my, the scope of my experience is, is limited. And it is fantastic to reach out to people who have very different experiences, different stories, different contexts, and to be able to learn from them and share their experiences with you. So what we're going to do is, is listen to my interview with Austin Guidry. And then at the end, I'll tell you a little bit about what's up with me and some updates in the life of Kevin. So let's hop right into our chat, the discussion with, uh, with Austin Guidry, known on YouTube as Austin in China. We are here with episode number 10 of the Just Asia podcast. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about creating content, content creation in China. And in this episode, I'm very happy to be chatting to, uh, for the first time in person, Austin uh, of the Austin in China YouTube channel. Thanks for joining the podcast. Woohoo. Hey, thanks for having me, man. That's awesome. Now, um, I've been watching you for some time on YouTube. But for those out there listening who may not know who you are, I was wondering if you could just tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and where you're from. Sure. So uh, my name is Austin Guidry. Uh, I am from uh, the the States, uh, from Texas specifically. And um, yeah, I first got to China in 2011 uh, as a study abroad student. Um I was basically I was the first student from my university to uh, to study at a like I got an opportunity to be the first student at my university to study uh, in a particular city um, in northwest China in a place called Lanzhou in, in Gansu province and it was also that university's first opportunity to host a foreign student so I was like I can't pass this up let's just see what happens. Wow. And, uh, like I went over there and it was, uh, absolutely insane. <laughs> and I was like, I like this absolute insanity. This is cool. I think I'll stay for a bit. Okay. And then, yeah, that was, that was, uh, what year is it? It's 12 years ago. Wow. Okay. So you've been mm-hmm. in China for those 12 years. Wow. Yeah. So- like I spent, well, yeah, I spent maybe a few months home, um, in between graduating and uh, starting work. But yeah, yeah, it's basically the entire time. Okay, so I'm curious, like, so pre-COVID, um, of course, because, you know, the landscape changed with COVID and, and things like that, but pre-COVID, yeah, I, did. Um, I, I, was, I was really hearing about how <clears throat> the market for, for teaching, for being an educator, for, you know, a lot of opportunities in China were starting to really open up. Um, I think typically, traditionally, when people who are American or Canadian like me, who think about moving to Asia to work abroad as maybe, you know, in education or ESL or those kind of things, you, you know, you think of Korea, South Korea, you think of Japan. Um, but I think for me anyway, I mean, I, I went to Korea back in 2002. And those days, 
Mm. China was not on the radar of people. Like that was not a consideration. It wasn't, no one talked about that. You weren't hearing things about it. Um, You know, when you were even kind of in the infancy of YouTube, when you were looking at uh, content of people who are teaching abroad, it was all Korea stuff. Um, It was all Japan stuff. So, you know, what was it that, I mean, uh, you mentioned this opportunity in university, but was, was China a place you had been interested in previously? Were you majoring in Chinese in, in university? How did, how did that connection happen? So, um, my major was, was history. Um, okay. so, you know, as, as you study history, you kind of bounce around different regions and different time periods and stuff. And, and, uh, I had this professor who was just, um, he was just this, uh, xenophile. Like he just, he just loved everything about China. He just okay. like was super interested in the language and the culture and this and this. And, and, uh, you know, it just, it, I, I guess I caught the bug, you know, okay. I caught the bug. And I was like, you know, I want to give this place a try. You know, I want to go over there. I've got, like, I only needed to write my senior thesis. That was the only thing I needed to do my last semester of university. Okay. So I was just like, well, hey, I'll just, you know, I'll just do it in China. Why not? I'm studying history. China's got some history. Let's yeah. see what's going on there. And then, um, and so, yeah, that's kind of what I did. And then I just took a bunch of China, Ch- you know, Chinese language classes along with my thesis work. So, um, yeah, but I, I never intended to stay in China. I intended China to be just kind of a, a cool little six month experience, you know, as I, you know, yeah. when, went on with my life. Yeah. But, uh, it's funny well, how that happens. Well, I mean, I mean, this is my is. 21st, my 21st year in Asia. And I mean, for me, yeah. uh, for me, I, I was, uh, I was actually, um, an IT developer before I became a teacher. So what I did before I went to Korea back in in 2002, I was an IT developer and I basically took like a one, it was the plan was a one year sabbatical from work to go to teach English Mm -hmm. for a year to just have an opportunity to travel. And that was 21 years ago. Um, And, and I I don't, I don't do IT and I haven't um, anymore. So it's it's interesting how that can change. Right. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Yeah. So, so we, uh, we've crossed paths and I mean, I've, um, you know, because of, of yep. YouTube and, and YouTube content creation. And I think that we connected, mm-hmm. I can't really remember, was it, was that pre pandemic or just as pandemic was happening? When was that? There was, um, I think it may, it, it, it's hard to, I think it was, pre- it's hard to kind of pull all it's that. It's blurry. I, it's blurry. But, yeah, it was probably slightly pre pandemic. Yeah. Probably think, within, probably in a, in a WeChat group. Probably yeah, like, you, you were. Yeah, I know probably, you were. Yeah. You were putting out an effort to basically, I think, to kind of of of, of reach out to other YouTube content creators who are based in China and and make connections. Yeah, you know, build, build those connections, which is something that I know as a content creator when I was living in Japan, especially in the earlier days of YouTube, it was really a kind of important thing that we um, content creators. Um, had like the back kind of back channel connections and we be, and we became friends, a lot of us, and we helped each other grow yeah. by, by promoting yeah, each other's absolutely. videos, by appearing in each other's videos and doing a lot of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, so I'm curious, how did, how did the whole YouTube thing, um, and again, for all of you guys listening, Austin in China is the channel to type into YouTube when you, when we're talking about uh, the thing we're talking about today. Um, but uh, how did, how did you get into the world of YouTube content creation? Um, so I, I knew that, okay. So basically when I was preparing to study abroad, um, this is, this is, uh, I arrived in China in February, 2011. Okay. So, you know, we're thinking like mid to late 2010 is when I'm doing most of my research. And it, during that time, like I'm, I'm trying everything I can to learn about this city of Lanzhou, this, this city out, you know, in the, in the deserts of Gansu, you know, I'm trying to figure out everything I can about it and I'm finding absolutely nothing out really. Okay. Um, there, there was, there's one weebly website uh, called redefining Lanzhou or something like that. And that was really all okay. um, about Lanzhou on the internet at the time. And the only person who was making content from China was, was this guy named Serpent ZA, who is, who's, who has shifted 
focus in recent years, let's say. <laughs> yeah. But um, but you know, at the time, he was literally the only person making content, and it was down in Guangdong Province, which is for anyone who has experienced China, Guangdong and Gansu are essentially totally different countries. Um, they're they're so different in every way. So like none of what he was saying applied to me. So I just went in completely blind. So I was like, well, okay, how about this? Like while I'm in Lanzhou, how about I make some sort of like record, some sort of diary, not only for myself, but for other people who may come to Lanzhou later, like who may experience a different part of China than, you know, what Winston's talking about. Let me put you know, my spin on it because like, I have no idea what I'm getting into. Let me kind of, let me help some people out. You know? Yeah. That was essentially the idea. Okay, cool. Well, I mean, that reminds me of um, just a, a, like two episodes ago, I was talking to a content creator based in Japan, a guy named Higgins in Japan. And what he was talking about, like one of the things is that, you know, when he would, when he would, um, the place he was moving to, he'd go onto YouTube and he'd find like lots of great travel blogs from great YouTubers who were doing travel stuff. Mm. And there's, there's definitely a place for that. And that's wonderful. And that's awesome. But it's very, yeah, yeah, yeah. very geared towards a traveler. And what he said, he was attracted to mine. Um, my channel was because mine was just very everyday stuff. Like this is, Yes. what it's like to just live here. It's not glitzy travel, just like what I do in a day, you know, how you pay your bills at a family mart, how you, mm-hmm. how you mm-hmm. go to a bank and do this thing, the kind of nuts and bolts stuff that's going to help you if you're going to be moving there. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But your channel has, <clears throat> it's, it grew. And I mean, you, 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 you were consistent over the years and, and, and you made some, some moves around. So what, what is it? <clears throat> and I, you know, as a content creator, I myself suffer from this sometimes. It, it can be hard to keep motivated sometimes. And it's easy. You see a lot of people who get to a place like China. They get to a place like South Korea, um, you know, Thailand. They start making vlogs. And after a few months, half a year, a year, they're done. They just, they just stop doing it. So what's been keeping you going for so long? Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's an interesting question because – uh, I think most of my subscribers would would argue that I'm not still going. Okay. Because I, I do so I do so infrequently like update my channel now. Okay. Because I'm just I'm so busy mm-hmm. at this job. Um but um I I, I consistently maintain the channel. I put out roughly one video per week for about 10 years. Wow, um, and that's amazing. For, yeah, I mean I yeah, for about 10, you know, give or take, you know, a, a miss here or there. But like, yeah, I have like 300, 400 something videos, you know, up like I, I'm 500. I, I don't even know how many videos I have. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's in, in, well, I think originally it was because I, one, I wanted my family and my friends to kind of not worry about me because like China, you know, has this reputation of being this like, you know, this horrible, bleak kind of place where everything is, where, where nothing is safe and guns are pointed at you all the time. And, and, um, and I just kind of wanted to show them, hey, like, I'm safe. Everything's fine. Like, you know, it's, it's cool. Like, look around, you know, and, um, and also, like, it was just a, it was a video diary because I was thinking, like, not very many people get the chance to do this. Mm-hmm. So I really need to take advantage of it. But as it kind of grew, then people start, you know, asking questions. Mm. And then you're like, well, I mean, people are asking me questions, so I might as well answer them. There's a new video, you know, and then you know, more and more people like throw their comments into the, and then like, before you know it, you've got these, these people who like, um, are genuinely curious to see things around you that like, you've never really thought about, you know, documenting before because it's every day to you. So you're like, Oh, maybe I can document this thing. And so it just like, it's, it's not really even a conscious process. It just happens because there's so many things that are, kind of being, 
you know, thrown out in front of you and like, Oh, I guess I can make this video. Okay. Oh, Oh, that, that's an idea I never thought of. Let me do that. Mm-hmm. Like it just snowballs. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Well, that's, <clears throat> I mean, it, it, that's one of the neat things about, you know, places like where we are now and where you are is that <clears throat> there's often, you know, you almost have to always have, I mean, I guess we do nowadays, right. With, with, with iPhones, we have a device in our pocket that can film at any, any point, but back in the day, yeah, <laughs> Free iPhones. I used to always have to carry a camera with me just, and I would always say, I always have a camera with me just in case, Mm -hmm. because you never know when you're going to cross paths with something fascinating. Um, So Mm -hmm. you always have to be prepared. Um, Now I'm curious. That's that's right. Like you are right now, um, the city where you're based right now. And I'm going to say, is it, I'm going to pronounce it wrong. Is it um, Hangzhou? Is that right? Yeah, Hangzhou. Yeah, I did Hangzhou. say it. Okay, and you I did. know you've, yeah, yeah, I said yeah. it. I, said, I had to think for a moment. I'm like, Hangzhou. <laughs> um, but you've also lived in Chengdu, right? Is that right? Yeah, I spent. Uh, ooh, how long did I spend there? Six years. Yeah, okay. about six years in in Chengdu. So are you uh, I spent a year. Oh no, I was just going to say I so- spent a year. <laughs> ah, we got a bit of lag here, guys. We're both everyone listening. We're both in China, so we've got a bit of a lag as we record. So we don't always have the best internet. Um, um, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, continue. I was just saying, yeah, I spent. Uh, I've been here for almost two years in Hangzhou. I spent about six years in um, in Chengdu, about a year in Tianjin, uh, mm-hmm. next to Beijing, and then I spent th- about three years, three and a half years in uh Lanzhou and Gansu. So I've kind of I've been in a few different regions. Wow. That's interesting. Like uh, I've been in China now for 6 years and I've only lived in tier 1 cities. I've only been in Beijing mm-hmm. and Shenzhen in Shenzhen now. So two mm-hmm. years two years in Beijing. This is my fourth year in Shenzhen. Um what kind mm-hmm. of what what was behind the choices for you with where you lived? Was it simply work or were you were they cities that you were interested in? Um, what what brought you to those places? Because those are for me. I mean, most of the people I've met, uh, you know, you, you think of the four tier one cities. You got your Guangzhou, your Shenzhen, your Shanghai, and your Beijing. Um, I think that those are the four. Um, but uh, but yeah. So what what yeah? What brought you to those places? Well, I know the first uh, one. But. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. The first one I I spent there just you know yeah because I had that study abroad opportunity and I just loved the city so much that I was like I need to find a job here. Um, so I just I just got to know that city really well. But mm. yeah, it was ultimately because of uh, it was work reasons because I I was working at this university that was like it's kind of nothing special. It was just kind of a meh university. Okay. Uh, and I was like, well, you know, since I'm here, I'm already working at universities. This is really cool. Like it, it like, it feels good to be a teacher at a university. Let me see if I can climb the ladder, you know? Okay. And so like, I went over to Tianjin at a, like a higher level university in Chengdu and went up to Sichuan Uni, which is like a top 20 university in China. It's like, it's like a really good school. So I was like, yeah, when I got that opportunity, I'm going to stay there. <laughs> nice. Okay. Cool. Cool. So <clears throat> you've, mm-hmm. you've, um, very different experience to me as far as work goes. You've been teaching in universities. That's really interesting. Mm. Um, so, okay. So, I mean, you're a content creator. Um, one of the, one of the reasons why I want to talk to you because for all of the people who are listening, um, you can actually go and, and see the things we're talking about on Austin's channel. Um, again, I don't really, <clears throat> Maybe there's more now. Maybe there was a, a a kind of a hold, a holding pattern on content creation during the COVID years. Um, but now that that's passed, maybe there will be more. Um, but I'm curious, who are some different content creators, maybe China-based ones, who may be active now or maybe active earlier, who are people that you kind of admired or watched or kind of I don't know, you know, borrowed from their styles, whatever it may be, just different people that you enjoyed watching um, or that you learned from. Okay. Yeah. So, um, oof, I mean, the, the, the well is fairly, fairly dry now. I don't, I don't consume a lot of content these days cause um, I just don't, I don't have the time. Uh, okay. But the, the one that I watch 
if if he uploads the one that I watch is a uh, snarky guy. Um, oh, okay. He's a yeah yeah yeah. So yeah, Jimmy over in 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 Shanghai. Um, but him and I are good friends. We 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 chat quite quite frequently. He's he's awesome. Um, like I, I watch his stuff. I just I I enjoy just. He's just a really wholesome guy and his, his videos are just, they're always good vibes. And, um, he's just, he's very true to who he is. Um, I, I, I appreciate that authenticity a lot. And, um, yeah, I mean, and, and back in the day, like I learned a lot about, um, the, the process of, of like video production and like what actual, like, production quality meant uh i learned a lot from um from serpent za and lao Wai 86 yeah because we worked in a we we worked on a, a project together called what to do like uh Ch- china what to do or world what to do and um you know this was it was like a travel based project um, okay. before everything became politicized and and everything fell apart and all of that you know mm-hmm. but you know, back in the day, like we were always like pushing each other to, Hey, your color correction, you know, isn't quite right here or, Oh, use a transition here. Or like you can push in this particular shot, you know, when this happens, you can do this and this, like it was a big, like collaborative process between, you know, a lot of different people. Uh, I think there was nine people on that project, um, at its height. So yeah, it was, it was, that was a, that was a great time. Um, most of the people now though, everyone's gone. Um, mm. like there's, 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 there's no one here in China now, essentially, who is making content that isn't for political purposes. Like mm. it basically do- doesn't exist anymore. Okay. Wow. And that, that's interesting. That kind of leads me. I don't want to, I'm not going to, I'm not going <clears throat> to debate here, pull or try to get any to dive into that part. <laughs> but what I'm, what I'm curious about, sure. and, I mean, and this sure. was, this was a, a talking point that I'd sent to you, but I mean, you know, you, you stuck it out, I assume through the last few years here in China, you've been here, right? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, I, I've been here too. And um, you know, I saw, I've seen from my own little perspective living here in the Sheko area of Shenzhen, China, which was kind of always, the traditionally kind of foreign enclave or expat enclave of, of the city there, there has been a big change in the landscape. You know, there was a big retraction in the foreign population. And we, we saw that in our school, you know, for example, the school I work at one point, I would say that well more than half of the children were foreign. I don't mean foreign passport holders. I mean, legit from other countries. And what happened is they left and Schools had to fill the void, so they brought in local students. And now, you know, I don't, I don't hear English anymore yeah. in the hallways. And I used to hear a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's I don't, right. You know, and 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 I'll also say the behavior of the children is is really different um, than it used to be, um, and not always in a better in a good way. Um, but it, but it's different. And I mean, it just walk. You know, so how many restaurants closed? How many expat driven driven uh, expat? kind of focus supermarkets close or, or, you know, those different kinds of things. Um, so, you know, for you, what, what made you stick it out? Why did you, why did you stay in China during those harder years? Um, when so many people left? I mean, I, I, I still have, I still have things I want to accomplish, you know, I still have places I want to go. I still have people I want to meet. I still have, uh, professional goals that I want to attain. Okay. I still, I still, I still see things for myself. Like I didn't, and, and I think it's sort of a, an incorrect framing. Well, how should I say this? Like I didn't come here to China because I wanted to experience diversity in the expat population. If you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't care if there are expats here or not. It literally makes no difference to me. Mm. Um, because like I'm living in China, you know, yeah. it's like, who, who cares if there are foreigners around, but at the same time, 
that is sort of an indicator of the overall, like, you know, uh, the overall kind of domestic situation. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I just stayed cause yeah, I, I've got things that I still want to do. Plus like I've got family here, you know, my wife is, is Chinese and my in-laws are all Chinese and, and it's, you know, even if I wanted you know, even if I wanted to get a visa for her to the U.S. to move, like it, it's going to take two years or a year or it's going to take a year or two yeah, yeah, to yeah. get that done. So it's like, OK, I could apply for her to get a visa, but do I go back by myself and stay in the USA for a year, two mm-hmm. or three while the borders are shut? And it's like, wh- what am I going to do? You know, yeah. are we going to are we both going to leave? Are we, it's like, I don't know. It's like, it's, it's easier to stay and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. other things yeah. to accomplish. Cool. Cool. Well, great answers. No, I totally understand. I mean, um, I think, you know, uh, maybe a lot of people who, who left had the luxury of being able to do so, you know, like, um, mm-hmm. when, when, uh, when I think of, you know, a lot of people I know who left, you know, maybe they were coming up at the end of a contract and they were an international family where yes. they, did, they didn't have roots yes. in Japan or sorry, in, in China. Uh, they didn't have, you know, maybe they, they weren't married to someone who's a local, um, you know, someone who is from China. Um, mm-hmm. so again, or, or they had companies that were supporting them too. Right. So they could easily transfer in mm-hmm. and out. Um, it kind of reminds me back to, um, uh, 2011 living in Japan when the whole, um, earthquake, Tohoku earthquake, tsunami, Fukushima thing happened. So my wife's Japanese and, and there were people who were like, you gotta leave Kevin, you gotta leave. And I had family in Canada who just, you know, their hearts were in the right place. They're like, we'll pay for your tickets. We'll bring the family over. We'll take care of you all. And my wife was just like, why would I do Like, wh- why would I go? Like, I'm, she's like, this is my home. I'm Japanese. And she's like, why would I leave? I can't leave. Why, why would I do this? You know? Um, I was like, yeah, can't argue that. Right. Uh, yeah, and absolutely. Leave. And we and, didn't leave. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's, uh, I, I get what you're saying. And even like for me, um, we don't have that connection to China because again, everyone in my family has a passport that is not Chinese, but at the end of the day, we, we chose to stay because we felt a loyalty to my school because my school took really good care of us when a lot of schools in a lot of different cities did not take care of their staff. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. A lot of people were just left out to hung out to dry, fired just like that. Yep. Um, and, and, and just yeah. left. hours cut, you know, yeah. lots of really, lots of really sleazy stuff yeah. can yeah. happen here because a lot of people don't know their rights and like, there's such a language barrier. There's such a, cultural barrier there's like it's it's if you don't know what you're doing if you're not savvy like china will eat you alive and like Mm. the expat community around the world is transient by nature true and then if you when you and then when you kind of so you've always got people cycling in and out anyway yeah but then when you get when all of these stories add up you know and they accumulate and then you know, add in things like, you know, a shut border and, you know, all these other things. It's like, yeah, of course it's going to, the community is going to almost completely disappear. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you know, hopefully, hopefully things will start to bounce back. I mean, zero, zero COVID left or went away. I should say in December, mm-hmm. they, they got rid of that policy and, you know, quickly, yeah. shortly thereafter, we all got COVID um, it was shocking. How 100% fast that happened. COVID. It was insane. Yeah, it was insane. COVID. It was insane how it happened. <laughs> it was so fast. Um, yeah. But yeah. once it did, and <laughs> you know, we all we all got better, and um, things got, you know, just kind of became more normalized and then normal as normal can be, I suppose. Um, at least I'm speaking from my perspective. Um, now we're at a point because I'm here in Shenzhen. We're right across the border from Hong Kong. We're now at a point where we can mm-hmm. make our, we can make day trips to Hong Kong again. You know, we can go shopping in Hong Kong. Come back, come back, and that's just such yeah. a and that is such a great sign of things. And I think of like for myself, even just a few weeks ago, there I was in in you know downtown in Shenzhen, walking along, and I saw a big group of foreigners who were wearing lanyards that clearly looked like they were there for some kind of conference, <laughs> all, all, cool, eating, cool. all sitting on a, a terrace at a restaurant eating and drinking. But what, what that meant for me, I wasn't saying, Oh, that's great that there's a bunch of foreigners here. I was thinking that's great 
that we're having some kind of international conference and there are people who are here now. They have the ability to fly into Shenzhen or come into Shenzhen, participate in a conference and then leave. That's a sign of, of health, of, of things getting better. That's so I was very happy yes. to see that. Yeah. So I'm curious. So, so that moving forward, I'm, I'm curious, like for, you know, as a content creator, um, you know, you're busy, definitely get that. Um, do you have any aspirations or some of the things that you've been talking about, things you want to do in the future? Um, are some of those related to your YouTube channel and creating content, making videos? Yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to get back into a little bit of, of streaming. Like I used to, like, for example, like I would take my, I would take my phone like on a gimbal and I would go around on like an e-bike or something, kind of putter around town and show people like, you know, what's going on in this like particular neighborhood or like, you know, this, like just show people kind of what's on the street. Um, mm -hmm. Talk about like the infrastructure or about like, you know, I mean, just the random things that you see, the street food or whatever it is. And yeah. I'd like to do that a, a few more times, you know, um, you know, or at least on a, on a fairly regular basis, like during a holiday or something. Um, yeah. I would like to make a couple of videos like specifically work focused because like as the borders open, um, people are going to start coming back here for, for work. Yeah. So like, um, cause I've, I've worked at uh, universities. I've worked at like training schools and now I'm working at a high school. So mm -hmm. like making a video kind of comparing those, um, you know, those types of environments would be good. So I'm, yeah, I yeah. would like to do that. Um, once the weather gets better, uh, once it warms up a little bit, I'm going to do that. And, uh, yeah, just kind of, it's more just like, see what happens and just see what, what the people want. Cool. Um, so yeah, no, no heart, no like firm plans, but I mean, the desire is there. I, th I think that's like, there's definitely a void or will be a place for doing those kind of things. Because I think even for me, like when I look at, <clears throat> When I look at content and I'm thinking if I was going to be researching, like, say, coming to China, going to a place, often we look at the year that video was made. How old is that video? Because we know that yeah. the, the newer that video is, the more relevant it's going to be. And it would be really yep. great to have new content coming out post zero COVID um, because the landscape has changed. And I know that things will open up and people will be coming back and there will be a lot more opportunities. Um, you know, I know in the international sphere of teaching where I'm, I'm an international school teacher. I mean, there's just a ton of international schools in China and, and there's some that pay yeah, extremely yeah. well and have extremely amazing packages oh, yeah. that are very interesting. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's, it's, um, that's, I mean, that's why we left, that's why we left Japan to come here now. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's, it's cool. And, and then hopefully, hopefully there'll be more content creators, um, you know, coming, coming your way. Um, but yeah, that's very cool. Um, well, you know, it's interestingly enough, I, I, I shot you some questions earlier and I, and before I sent them to you, I didn't even, or before we, we chatted, I did not know that you have um, a spouse who was from China. So I, I, yep, I put I up a country indeed. saying, I put up, I should, I should say, I sent you a question asking if, if there's any other countries on your radar. Um, but at, at, the, at the moment, I can tell no, not at the moment. Um, you've got a lot more in nah, China. Nah. So what about China itself? Let's talk about that. What are some of the things? Because I have to admit, we as a family had a bit of a bucket list of things we wanted to do in China. And a lot of it we didn't get, we didn't get to do. Oh, that's me. Sorry. Apologize for that, listeners. That is a, a <laughs> spam call coming um, to my computer from someone probably somewhere like in Beijing trying to sell me something. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, we, we had a bucket list of things we wanted to do in China and we got to do some of them, but a, a lot we didn't because of zero COVID. And now we're at a point where we're, we are transitioning out of China. We're leaving in a few months um, because, mm. you know, we, we are that expat family who, you know, who does have that kind of, I don't want to say nomadic life because we're not nomads, but you know, we, we do move on. I mean, um, I've been, yeah, in, yeah, I've been yeah. in South Korea, I've been in Japan, I've now lived in China and now I'm moving on to Malaysia. Um, but what mm. are, what are some places in, in China that you would really like to, to explore, to dig into and maybe document through YouTube? Yeah, uh, it's, it's, 
it's hard, man. It's hard to say because, like, I mean, I would say that I have probably uh, I've done the majority of of traveling that I would like to do in terms of like the specific places that I was like, oh, I've always wanted to go here, here, here. Okay. Like, I've been to several sections of the Great Wall. You know, I've been to uh, see the Terracotta Warriors. Blah blah blah. I've been to like all the like really famous places in china um like i've i've seen i've seen so much but but at the same time there's there there's still so many places to go like this massive country it's yeah. part of the reason like i've never traveled to any other country in asia okay. like i've been in china for i've been in china for 12 years and i've never been to vietnam i've never been to you know south korea i've never been to japan i've never because china's so big there's so many places Mm. Um, so it's like, you know, I've never been through like, um, I've never been to Shenzhen, for example. Okay. You know, I've never been to Macau. Um, oh, okay. I've never been to like Zhuhai. I've never been to Jiangxi. I would like to go to, um, I'd like to go to Shanxi, I think, because there's lots of really cool mountains and rugged environments and like, mm. you know, the hanging temples and things like that would be really cool. Um, going to Hunan, like Zhang Jiajie would be really cool. Like that place where they filmed Avatar. Yeah. yeah, Um, yeah. Like that national park, that national park would be really cool to visit. Um, there's Harbin, which is up kind of near, near Russia in the Northeast. Yeah. 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 It's really far Um, up for their, yeah. For their ice festival. I'd like to see that. Um, I'd like to go to Jilin because there's a like around Changbai Shan. There's a there's a lake there that's supposed to have like a Loch Ness monster kind of equivalent. Okay, there. I'd like to go check that out. Yeah, I'd that like to check cool. that out. There's a, there's another one out in in Xinjiang uh, that has has a, a similar um, has a similar kind of story to it. There's like there's so many like Inner Mongolia for the grasslands. I mean, there's there's so many cool places. Um, so I've been to, I've been to a million places, a million little villages. I've seen some crazy stuff, um, that is hard to believe, but, um, there's an equally, you know, vast number of places that I haven't been. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. It is a huge country and there is so much to see. And that's again, one of the things that, you know, we have regrets because of that zero COVID time, but I think we got scared to travel. I mean, yeah. we were here for years before we zero did. COVID happened and we got scared because we did have, we had had these lulls where things kind of seemed to normalize and we'd have co- a holiday and a bunch of coworkers would go somewhere. And it happened more than once when a group of coworkers would get locked down in a hotel somewhere far away while traveling and, and stuff mm-hmm. wouldn't, and stuff wouldn't go well. And we had coworkers getting trapped in some places because of that, um, yeah. you know, they, they go to a resort somewhere and then there's a positive case in that resort and boom, they'd lock the whole thing down. And it was just like, oh, wow. So we were just, I think it got to a point where we were even too nervous to even like basically leave the neighborhood. Um, so, uh, yeah, but, you know, that, that happened to me as well. Happened yeah. to me as well. Like we just, we, we quit going out almost all together. Cause it's just yeah. like, it's like, I, I don't personally care about COVID. Like, but I just, I don't want to get locked down. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's how I felt too. I had no fear of the illness. And once I got it, yeah, you know, I was, I was kind of proven right. Cause it didn't, wasn't so bad, but for me, for yeah. me um, I, I'm not making light of that because it is a very serious thing. For yeah, some yeah, people, yeah. Obviously. Um, but I was just scared of getting locked down somewhere. Um, you know, yep. um, but, uh, yeah. So, you know, uh, I don't want to keep you much longer, Austin. It is Friday. You're busy. You got a pile of work to do. Um, all of you guys that are listening, <laughs> go to YouTube, check out Austin in China. Um, yeah, thank you so much for for taking the time to stop by the podcast. Um, it's the first China based guest on the podcast. Got another. Um, oh, got really? A, yeah. Well, it's a new podcast, but you know there will be more. Um, mm-hmm. I'm interviewing um, uh, an acquaintance, a, a Twitter friend of mine. Um, uh, early next week uh, for the podcast, he's based here in Shenzhen, and he's got a neat story too. So we're going to find out more about his experiences in China, um, and he's someone who's on his way out as well, but heading to Europe. Um, so you know that that interesting expat lifestyle. Um, but yeah, Austin, thank you so much. 
And uh, yeah, mm-hmm. can't wait to talk to you again soon. Yeah, man, it, was, it was a good time. It was a nice chat. Thanks for having me. A very big thank you to Austin Guidry. Austin, thank you so much for taking the time to stop by the Just Asia podcast and share your story with uh, me and with all of you fantastic people out there listening. That was great. And for all of you, go to YouTube and check out, uh, just do a type for a type in Austin in China, Austin in China, and you can find his channel. He's got more than 27,000 subscribers and a lot of fantastic content about a lot of different places and about a lot of different aspects of life in China. So again, go subscribe to uh, Austin in China on YouTube. Now, Let's move on and tell you a little bit about what's up with me and some updates. Uh, we're on the home stretch here, folks. The home stretch of leaving China. Only five weeks left in the school year, basically, as you're listening to this uh, podcast. Uh, the last day of school for me, and for all the, of you who don't know, I am an international school educator. Um, so all the people, are my school, our final day of school is May 31st. And then we're going to be leaving uh, maybe a little over a week after that. We will be leaving China. And uh, moving on, we're moving on uh, to other pastors. Uh, we're going to be heading to Japan for a month for holiday, seeing family, catching up with friends, and just enjoying time in Japan. Off to Canada after that, and then to Malaysia, where we start new. So basically, uh, we've been tidying up the house a little bit more, uh, talking about more things. I contacted the, the, the shipping company that um, we're hopefully going to be hiring to move our things to Malaysia, and I've got... Um, a person from the shipping company coming over in a few days to do an appraisal to look at our house and see how much stuff we really need to ship and can kind of give us a ballpark figure of how much it will cost. Hopefully a bit more than a ballpark figure, a little more accurate. Um, yeah, so that's what's going on there. Um, <clears throat> just doing a little bit of visa stuff. Um, it's pretty straightforward, though. Nothing big to report there. Uh, yeah, and just kind of soaking it in that you know we're going to be our time in China is coming to an end. Um, I suppose it may be a little bit harder if, um, if it weren't for the fact that, to be honest, so many of my colleagues are moving on as well. It's a big year of movement. Uh, a lot of colleagues and friends left last year and this year, um, most people I know are leaving. So it's, it's a big, a big year of flux, a big year of turnover. You know, after after living through zero COVID, something we talked about, <clears throat> Austin and I in the podcast, after getting through zero COVID, um, someone like me, um, you know, my family, we don't have that connection with China. You know, my wife's not from here. I'm not from here. Um, it's a third country for us. So we don't have that kind of deep connection. So for us, it's, uh, you know, it's time to move on. And I think a lot of my colleagues are feeling the same way. Um, just because, you know, it, it's, it's been a challenging few years for so many complicated reasons and it's, it's good to just, again, start new. So yeah, that's it for me. Um, not a lot to report. My kids are doing well. My wife's doing well. The family's doing well. This podcast is doing well. I want to thank you guys all. Um, got to do the obligatory social media things. Um, remember if you like the podcast to so leave a rating wherever you listen to it and write a review. If it's on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, please give us a really nice, big rating. Give us five stars. Uh, Write all about us. Share this podcast on your social media. If you're a Twitter user, uh, Facebook user, whatever it may be, please share the podcast. Help it get bigger. Help it grow. Um, Follow me on Twitter at MadForMaple. I'm very active there. All all these links will be in the show notes below, and as well as Austin's um, contact links as well. And uh, what else? Yeah, check me out on YouTube at Busan Kevin. I do blog and vlog. Oh, I did make a live stream video on the weekend. Last weekend, I made a 30-minute live stream from here in Shenzhen. That was a lot of fun. Um, You know, it was it was fun to do. I was happy to have uh, stable internet. Uh, while I was doing it, that doesn't always happen. And, uh, no one bothered me while I was making the video. No one, uh, no one harassed me, um, or anything like that. Uh, so I made that video and, uh, yeah, a few hundred people have watched it, which is cool. Appreciate those people for watching it. And, uh, it was a lot of fun to do. What else? Uh, yeah, follow me on Instagram at Jayland Kev. Go check out the Facebook page for the podcast over at Just Japan Stuff. Again, uh, facebook.com slash Just Japan Stuff. All the links are below. And uh, again, that's it. So thank you so much for listening to episode number 10 of the Just Asia podcast. Thanks for helping us grow. Hope you enjoyed the interview. And we'll be coming back to you again very soon with another fascinating profile of someone living here in Asia. 
Bye-bye.